Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. Welcome me to another mighty video. My name is Marcelo. You already know that I am mighty. And I'm as mighty as it gets. Today, I have a month in review for everybody out there. And I also have an explanation as in why my thumbnail says that I made over $100,000. Actually, 103000 to be exact. Did I, did I made 103000 in the month? No. <laughs> no. No, I did not. But... Even though the, the thumbnail is a little bit more enhanced to entice people into clicking on the video, it is not clickbait because this is the month that I crossed officially over $100,000 in profits. So I figure why not put it on the thumbnail? Um, as you can see, I am inside my TraderView metrics, um, which, is a, which is a trading software you know, most day traders utilize to track their metrics to, to you know, to track their statistics such as profit loss ratios, PLs, equity curves, average winners, average losers, uh, profit factors, and all that fun stuff to see, you know, how well you're doing and how well you're doing as a trader. Um, as you can see behind me, right there, right there, you can see 103,000 with 400 bucks in total profits. Definitely a number I'm proud of. Definitely six figures. Um, it's, it's, it's been a milestone ever since I started to trade. And, you know, I can't complain. But this is not this is, this is is not a year in review. This is not a career in review or anything like that. This is a month in review. So let's take a look at the month. Let's take a look at the month and how we did. So let me make myself a little smaller here. There we go. Now. On the month, we're green, ten thousand, and let's round that up, ten thousand and eight hundred bucks. On my TD account, and I'm also happy to say that I am green on my Lightspeed account, and I actually have a screenshot of that somewhere in here. Let's see. Lightspeed. End of equity, month. Um, I know it looks like this is just the PNL for that day, but it's it's the PNL of the month. Light speed 269, not great. I didn't, I, I don't trade that often on my light speed account anyway. Um, but you know, 11k a month, which uh, which is essentially what I'm what I'm showing you guys. 11k a month, a little bit over that. Um, but you know, 11k a month, definitely a solid little month that I'll take. Why is this a solid month? Is it 11,000 something? I am proud of, of course. Is it my biggest month? No. Um, is it one of my biggest months? Not really. But it is the month that I actually got out of a drawdown. A drawdown that I was in for the, for the longest time, for almost three months. I was in this freaking drawdown um, that I couldn't get myself out of. So let's take a look at my... Let's remove this and let's take a look at my equity curve. If I can freaking remember what the hell it is. Where is this thing? So this is January right here. You know, one, two, three, four red days. Um, you know, at the beginning of the month, I, I wasn't going, I wasn't seeing a lot of progress. I was going like kind of like green, red, green, red, green, red, green, red. Uh, but then the second half of the month, I finally got dialed in. We had some better momentum. And, you know, I was able to capitalize with some bigger green days. 500, 900, 1,000, 1,000, um, 2,000, 1,000. Um, so, you know, I was able to connect at the end of the month uh, as we saw some better momentum. Okay, so where the hell is the equity curve? Um, detailed. I should write this down. Let's see. Let me try and remember. All right, I found it. I found it. Here it is. Cumulative PNL. Beautiful. Finally crossed over 100k. Um, and as you can see, this is my drawdown right here. I think this is what three months. 09, 11, and 12. 09. Well, like two months and a half. Of just going absolutely sideways. Um, one of the things I must say though is that I am definitely proud of my risk management during this period. This is a period in which I had to transition my strategy. This is a period in which, you know, before this, before this consolidation right here, I would never buy dips. All this profit you see right here is 100% of a breakout. But unfortunately, we got into a market that I wasn't able to connect as well as I used to on my breakout trading, you know, buying high, selling higher, buying with the green tape and all that. So this you know, this patch for me 
was a period in my career that I had to pivot, that I had to adjust, that I had to, you know, accept that the breakouts were not working as well as they used to, at least for now, because we are in a bear market and all, and all that. And I had to, you know, actually dabble with the dip, dabble with dip trading, dabble with the new strategy, trying to buy the dips, which is essentially the opposite of what I used to do. You know, buying red candles now, buying with red on the tape now, instead of just waiting for a little confirmation, buying green on the tape, buying green candles. Um, anyway, so this transition here for me, and it's not a transition because I do both now, according according to what, we, what we're looking at. Um, but, you know, this transition and also the fact that I was traveling a lot, this is the period that I went to CRT, the period that I had my biggest red day ever, the period that I went to see Ross, the period that I went to El Salvador, I was everywhere. And, you know, trading with Wi-Fi, traveling to trading station, not in my zone, trying, trying to, you know, develop new strategies. Anyways, a little bit of a domino effect of a disastrous trading. But even then, even when I wasn't having big green days, even when I wasn't green, even when I was not having green days at all, I still follow my rules and continue to be a risk manager, which is why my worst case scenario was for me to go sideways. Because what if I would have started to trend down and actually give back profits? Then right now, now that I'm building back up, building some momentum, this wouldn't be profits. This would, this would just be me digging myself out of a hole. So trying to go sideways, doing managed control, you know, manage, managing the damage, doing damage control, reducing share size until you feel like your confidence is back, until you feel like you're finally connecting with, with the setups was key for me. And, you know, finally crossed cross that mark, um, which, you know, definitely kind of like, here's the freaking rod on Jesus Christ. This is kind of like, this is kind of like the, um, the highlight of the month. But let's take a look at some other metrics. So, um, isn't this crazy? I made almost 400K, well, 375, and I lost 270. So you can say I made 300K and lost 200K equals $100,000 in profit. Uh, this is day trading for you. Are you willing to, to make all this much and then lose all that and take the difference? I, I sure am. Definitely a roller coaster, emotional roller coaster, but I'll definitely take it. All right, let's take a, let's take a, actually a look. Let's, let's actually take a look at my metrics on the month and see how that went. Also, today we have a freaking crazy stock. I mean, I'm up nicely today, by the way, too. Um, $1,500 bucks to definitely take. Where is this thing? Let's see. MSGM. Look at this. My God, look at this move. This thing went today from a price of five bucks to 27, 400% move. What? That is absolutely crazy. And you know, the tricky and the sad thing about this is like, this is, this should be a day that I'm up $10,000. But unfortunately I had some sloppy trading at the beginning and then I had some fearful trading on the way up, which, you know, just ended up giving me a, a $500 P&L on the ticker. I actually, you know, lost on the initial move. I just couldn't connect. Lost more in the second move and then make, made it all back during this consolidation because we finally had a range. I was finally able to do some technical analysis and, and play off of levels and, you know, made it all back. But by this time, this thing was so extended that the only way was I was allowing myself to trade this was with 200 shares. And, you know, with 200 shares, you know, it's tough. It's tough to make a lot of money. Um, but I went from red at 1.700 bucks Two up five hundred. Um, I'll definitely take it. Um, I'll do a recap on that. Well, I won't do a recap. I'll show you the live trades after we do this little search here and, and dig into my metrics. So, ten thousand eight hundred with my live speed eleven thousand. Good. Uh, definitely take it. Biggest winner eight four hundred bucks, which is today I think actually on this thing. Um, biggest loser three seventy three. What was this on? I don't even remember. Let's see what that loads. Um, daily volume, 200,000. MSGM, Jesus Christ. So my biggest winner and my biggest losses were both today. That's funny. Average winning trade, 26 bucks. Average choosing trade, 19 bucks. These are smaller numbers given that I've been trading with smaller size. Again, I was in this drawdown. I, uh, you know, was trying to rebuild slowly, um, trying to rebuild confidence. So, you know, definitely trading with a thousand shares almost every day, 1500. Um, so, you know, smaller winners, total number of trades, 2000 trades, accuracy 52, which is good. You know, this is good because it, it is almost a two to one profit loss ratio. And then on top of that, my accuracy is a little bit above 52. 
you know, definitely take that. Those are profitable metrics. Average hold time in my winners. I've been trying to hold for a little longer in my winners. This is average, by the way. So some trades I'd hold for a minute. Some other trades I, I hold for two seconds. And the average is 20 seconds. It doesn't mean that I, on every single winning trade, I'm, I'm holding 20 seconds. Same goes with the losers. Um, made 30K, lost 20. Um, let's see what else. This is, the, this is the equity curve at the beginning of the month. Essentially, the first half of the month was flat. And then after that, I finally was able to pick up to pick up some momentum. Um, let's see what else. What else matters? Win loss, win versus loss. So I had an eighty percent accuracy, sixteen winning days, four red days. On those four red days, I lost twelve hundred. On the winning days, I made. 12,000. Uh -huh. I want to see, let's go back here and take a look at the times. No instrument. I want to see my biggest winners. Biggest winner GNS, 2,000 bucks. BCFD, um, almost 2,000 bucks again. HSES, these are very familiar ticket, tickers that were moving constantly almost every other day in this month. APGN was my bigger loss. Vivo, COSM. BBAI, I don't even remember that. I think I traded that today. How am I that right on it? Um, but anyways, I think what matters here is that my metrics, I feel like they're good to go. They're good metrics, and I feel like I should be pushing more shares. So that's going to be the goal for next month. Instead of trading with 1,500 shares, starters, I'm going to be trading with 2,000 starters. Well, I don't know if I want to make that jump. Because starters, and sometimes I add, and then if I have 3,000, I don't know if I want to be added to six. I guess it's going to depend, but that's the goal of the month. To try to push shares again. Because 1,500 is not big shares for me. You know, on August, I made... Over $35,000, my best month ever. It was common for me to constantly be trading 4,000 shares, 6,000 shares, constantly. Um, so I want to get to that level, slowly but surely. And I know I want, I'm want. i getting out of this rough patch, so I want I don't want to get too excited and start running before I can't walk. But definitely the goal of, the next, of this next month is going to be um, to increase share size all right let's take a look at some live trades on this crazy stunk jesus christ um let's see leave a like for the live trading and leave a like for the month in review um i'm sharing i'm sharing everything with you guys i just want to i just want you to know that the guy you are checking out on youtube to hopefully learn from is the real deal you know the real deal money making profits um, every month. All right, let's take a look at this. So, you know, as I, as you can see right here, I'm red on this thing. Um, and I'm red. And, um, you know, have kind of FOMO because how the hell am I red on a stock that went up 400%? But anyways, because I have a cushion in the day. In this At this point in time, I was sitting up green 500 bucks or something. Because I, because I was green at around 500 bucks, I told myself, okay, I have a little bit of a cushion. If I go red, if I go flat, of course, I'm going to stop on the day. But this thing is too crazy not to trade. I guess I had some FOMO because this is very extended. But what I did was tell myself, okay, reduce size and stop. If you can make some progress, then keep at it. And if not, stop. So my first trade here is a false hold. Okay. So this stock just came down from 27 all the way down to 21. And I'm looking for a false hold trade. As I see that the hold level doesn't get pinned, right there I get long. Long 21.16. Okay. Long, let's see, let's see that again. So watching, it looks like it unpinned. I jump in, I jump in 21.16. Um, and then I sell the entire thing. Of course, too soon. But it was a giant win when it comes to dollar per shares. But if I would have held three seconds more, 
Look at that. <laughs> Probably my biggest winner per share wise ever. And then your boy jumps back in at a dip around 25. Um, I want to see if this thing wants to rip through higher day now because that bound was so strong. It wouldn't be uncommon if we dipped to 25. It's not going, so I sell for a flat trade. It, it took too long to, to go. We're dipping. We dipped to 22.93. I jump in, get a terrible fill, but this is the deal with these. Um, got a terrible fill, but I'm in. I'm in, I'm in, I'm in. And now I think this one is a winning trade. Is it? Yeah. Okay. So I'm in. And now I'm out. Another uh, like a dollar share win. Um, let's see what else. And then I give it all back. And I go red again. <laughs> so I try to catch a, a bottomless flush. So I'm in on this flush thinking that this kind of was going to have a wick somewhere. It flushes even more. I stop out. I go red. And I'm like, man, but you know what? This dip is looking good. We are about, we are about to do a double bottom. Let me jump back in. So as it comes lower, I jump back in. And then here, as we get the spring bounce, I sell half. I sell um, half for a dollar share. And then I'm looking to see if I can sell the other half for another dollar share. Well, not quite. Well, almost. Well, I'm still holding. Um, now it's gone. And then my another trade was another, you know, dip. Another dip trade. Another dippy dip trade that I'm selling again for almost like dollars a share. It's like, this is crazy. If I'm trading with this with 2,500 shares, I'm making 2,500 shares per trade almost. Of course, high risk, high reward. So I can, I can lose that in one swing or even more. So the, the reason why I was using 250 shares was like, okay, this thing is extended as hell. Worst case scenario, I lose $5 a share. Five times 25. It's what, um, a shit ton of money. <laughs> so, you know, I was willing to lose that. How much is that? $5 a share times 25, let's see. 25. You can do this. All right, over a grand. I was willing to lose over a grand on this thing. You know, worst case scenario, I got caught on a terrible flush. And honestly, I could lose ten dollars a share on this. If I if I get caught on a halt down and then it gets lower. But anyways, those are the trades. Now is YouTube short time. So give me one second. Give me una segunda, por favor. Uh let's see. YouTube short. So, YouTube short. Why do I do YouTube shorts? Well, a lot of people really like the lettering archives. And some people say that I rant for too much. So in my YouTube short section, you can skip the recap and just go ahead and look at the live trading archives. So you're welcome. Um, your boy is doing, doing it all and you don't even like, come on, leave a like. But I have 15 seconds though. So I gotta be quick. All right, I need a clock. Let's see. Live clock. What better clock than my DAS clock? Am I right? All right, let's see. Where do we put this thing here? So it's looking for a false halt trade 
out of this giant panic flush. I take a sap there, but he's gonna get halted. But my actual, my shares get picked up, so I'm looking again for a false halt. Watching, long as, as he doesn't get pinned. And just like that, I make over three dollars a share. Damn it, was that was that quick enough? I don't know. Dang. I put the clock up, but then I forgot what time I saw. I see one time. Wait, 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 wait. All right, after this giant panic flush, I am looking to take a dip off of a false halt. I take a stab, but it looks like he's getting pinned down, so I get back out. Watching again for another stab. Backing long as he doesn't get pinned. And selling for a $3 share win. God damn it. Anyways, that's going to do it. Thanks, everybody, for joining in uh, and tuning in for the, uh, to this video. It's been your boy. It's been Mighty. And um, hopefully you guys enjoyed the content. Actually, actually, we got to do another trade. Come on, let's see. Another quick one. So I'm looking to catch a dip here as the triple bottom setup. I am long at 2162 and trying to see if this res if this red candle is going to hold up. Can we see a bounce? Okay, this is definitely too long. Well, anyway, triple bottom. There you go. All right, <clears throat> that's going to do it. Please do like, subscribe. It's been your boy. The most useful day trading channel out there. Why? Because I do it all. I show you everything. So please leave a like. Um, let's, get, let's look forward uh, for February. And before I leave, some motivation for anybody out there struggling. Yes, you probably read January. And you've probably been read for the last entire year too. And you're thinking to yourself, should I quit? What the hell am I doing with my life? Why am I day trading? Isn't this crazy? Well, let me tell you that. Let me tell you that I've been that person. I've been in your shoes before. And, you know, it took me two years, two years and a half of, of straight up losing for me to actually get into the place I am here now. And um, one thing is true, that the only reason that I made it to the other side was because I didn't quit. If you don't quit, does that mean you're going to make it? No. Welcome to real life. Anything, nothing in real life has guarantees of anything. But what I assure you, though, is that if you don't quit, if you continue to track your trades, if you continue to learn, if you continue to adapt day in and day out for long enough, I feel like your probability of success is going to be so high that you know you have very, very good chances of making it. We have to be consistent in your work ethic. Showing every day, recording your trades, tracking your metrics, seeing what you can remove that is not helping you, seeing how you can double down on your strengths, accepting that not all strategies are going to be for you, and trying to find that place in the market that, that aligns with your emotions, that aligns with the type of person you are. Do you wish to be up 11,000 like I am? Sure. Um, for some people, for some of you guys, that might be nothing, but there's some people that want to be up that amount that much. But are you willing to take this riskiness called MSGM? If not, then that's fine. Don't, don't try to be a hero and, and do something that does not align with your risk tolerance, does not align with your style, does not align with your personality. But do but do and try do go ahead and try to find your place in the market. You know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a true believer that if that the only way you lose is that if you don't give up. Again, this is tough because. It's tough to keep guarantees and, and most people lose money and that's a fact. And my results are not typical. But what I would recommend though is to keep trying. Don't give up. Try in a simulator if you're risking hard earned money because I turned the corner in a simulator. I became profitable in a freaking simulator. Treat with respect. And if you're really here to build a career and not some quick cash, who cares if you are in a year in a simulator, right? 
don't have FOMO that your simulator games are not going to be real. Who cares? If you can build a career off of this, nobody's going to remember that year of sim you went through. But anyways, keep your head up. This is just a mindset game. So don't allow your psyche to go down. Don't allow your psyche to be broken. Because once you lose your mental, once you lose your confidence, you're done for. So, you know, keep looking at everything with a positive. Today I'm red. Time to learn. Today I'm green. Time to learn. What did I do? What did I do right? How can I repeat it? Today I'm red. Well, I'm not red. I'm not gonna be sad and, and cry all day. I'm gonna tell myself I had a lot. I have a lot to learn, and this is going to be a great learning experience. I'm going to learn from this red month. I'm going to learn from this red week. I'm going to learn from this red trade. Anyways, just know that I've been there, man. Any stuff, any sucks ass, because you're alone. And then if your loved ones are gonna ask you how's trading doing. And you know that it's going absolutely terrible, but you're still going to tell them, it's great. I am learning. I've learned so much this month. That's what I used to do. Because what else am I supposed to do? It's, I, I'm sucking, mom. I'm, I'm, I'm losing all our money. You know, you can't do that. You can't say that. You have to trick yourself. You have to fake it till you make it. I am learning. I am learning. I'm getting better every single day. Or maybe I'm getting a little, a little worse every single day. But as long as I'm getting a little better every day, your odds of success are going to go so much higher. My odds of success went, went so high that I finally, you know, stumbled upon, turned in the corner and made it. Um, man, I'm, I'm, I'm just going back to my days of pain. It's tough. It's tough, but I've been there and I survived. And, um, you know, I truly believe that you guys have the potential to do it. So... So let's get dialed in and you know we live to trade another day and we live to try another week another month